What's up everyone? David from DoD Media. For a long time, any kind of complicated masking work that you wanted to do, you kind of had to do it in After Effects, right? You'd use track mat, you'd use keyframed mask positions, mask paths, that kind of thing. And doing this kind of thing in Premiere Pro was always just a little bit gimmicky. Like even animating a mask in Premiere Pro is just, it's so much less user-friendly than After Effects is. However, there is a little known secret that you can use track mat masks directly in Premiere Pro without having to touch After Effects. And so this tutorial is gonna show you how you can use track mat directly in Premiere Pro. Whew. Whoa, weird using this camera again but given that this bit of my studio is kind of built into a cupboard, I don't really have room to have a bigger camera set up, but uh, wow. In case you're wondering, this is the little Lumix GF6 with a big wide angle adapter on the kit lens so that I can get this huge, huge view even though I'm literally just right next to it. Okay, so I've got this edit in Premiere Pro, it's a really basic edit. It's a little montage of my friend Vedran, who's a DJ, doing his thing. Um, I've just slapped some music on it, which isn't the music he was playing, but it just it's just something to have as sound, as, a, as something to cut to, basically. Um, it was all shot in 120 frames a second, so I've slowed that down to 20% of its original speed uh, to get it to play back at, a, at 24 frames a second. It was shot in Switzerland, which is a PAL country, a 50 hertz country, and I was shot shooting in 120 frames a second, which is a 60 hertz standard, so there's a bit of light flickering going on, but, oh well. I should have formatted the card and changed it to 100 frames a second, and then I wouldn't have gotten the light flickers. Nonetheless, here is what I have right now. Super simple, like there's no, nothing complicated there. But what I'd like to do is to transition between the cuts, instead of just having a hard cut, I'd like it so that there's a kind of a glitch that happens on each cut. And the best way I can think of to do that would normally be to send it to After Effects to do a bit of track matting using masks and glitches and uh, like glitch templates, which I've made. and. Given that you can do this in Premiere Pro now, it's interesting because you just save a lot more time that way. You don't have that whole After Effects step. You just cut that step out of your workflow. So here's what I would do, and here is how I would use Track Mat to do it. So I'm just gonna drag down one of these glitches, bam, on this cut, cool, that's what it looks like. And I wanna go one, two, three, three frames. Okay, and then one, two, three, cut that there. All right, and that way it plays and it goes like that. I mean, that looks crap because we haven't set anything to track mat yet. However, if we move this up one and move this up one because we're gonna need the layers to overlap because I want one to glitch into the other. And so I need the mask to cut out part of this video track two and reveal video track one beneath it. So it's super quick. You select video track two, the clip that's in video track two. We're just gonna cut it there because I don't want all of this to be affected by the track mat. I just want it to be this part here. Okay, so we're gonna select that. We're gonna come up to effects, type in track and you'll see track mat key, lovely. We're gonna drag that over there. And then in the effects uh, controls, we're gonna scroll down and where it says track mat key, beautiful, where it says mat. This one here, Video Glitch 3 Alpha, is on Video Track 3. So we're going to select Video 3. And then you see it doesn't do anything because it's using an Alpha. What we should do is make it use a Luma. And there we go. Now, I don't know. Yeah, scale does work. Okay. There was a while where scale uh, or any kind of motion didn't work. So it's nice to see that it does now. And now if I play this... There you go, there's a bit of a weird glitch going on. Now, that's cool, but 
it's not exactly, you know, riveting stuff. What's interesting is making it uh, change slightly. So we're going to go along, change it in frame there, and then change it there. What we're actually going to do is delete that and bring in a different mask because it's not based on the individual mask. It's based on the track that it's on. So in a way, it's actually better. It's more versatile than After Effects because you can put anything on that track and use it as a track map. That's really cool. That's something that you can't really do in After Effects because it's all layer based and you can't have two events, two items on the same layer in a way that you can in uh, Premiere Pro. So that's kind of cool. Um, so if you then come along, cut that, cool, and there we go. And then here we're going to scale this up, make that glitch different. And then here we're going to rotate that by 180 degrees to flip it over. And there we go. Now, the footage itself doesn't change there, so what we can then do is come along and change the footage. So cut that there, cut that there, cut that there, and cut that there. Okay, and then this one will make it 120 in scale, this one will make it 120 in scale, and this one will make it 150 in scale. And already there, you're getting a more interesting sequence of events happening. And now we can push it even further if we want. We could make this a uh, certain color. So let's go to, let's type in color and then channel mixer. Channel mixer, we're going to make that zero, that zero, get a nice red bit in there. Cool, good glitch, good glitch. And then this one, we're going to do the same thing. So we're just going to copy that effect. Channel mixer, cool, bam, paste, all right. And now that one, we don't want it to be red. So we want that to be zero. Green, green, we want that to be 100, bam. There we go. Okay, and then finally, this one here. Let's give that a little bit of a, a red boost as well. Actually, no, let's make that one blue. Let's at least do all of the RGB, not just RGR. There we go. And that literally took a couple of seconds, a couple of maybe like a minute, two minutes. All you need for this then is a little sound effect that makes it sound like a glitch. Because remember, 50% of everything you do in film is all about the sound. So I'm going to load up this glitch sound effect. <laughs> Lovely. I'm going to drop that in there, just there. And I'm going to trim that down to about there. I'm going to hit R and drag it out because I want to drop the pitch. It's a little bit too prominent. So, that's good, that's nice. I'm gonna drop the volume down by hitting G to affect the gain. I'm gonna drop it by 10 decibels, and that way it should be quiet enough that it's subtle. You hear it, and because you hear it, the glitch seems more real, but it's not in your face. Lovely. A little bit too prominent still, I think. And drop it another 10. Yeah. Nice. And that's really cool. I mean, it's it's just using track mat. And because you can apply it to an entire video track, you can use loads of different mats to, to change how it's affecting the clip that's that's got the track mat effect on it. And you can even use other footage. You could use black and white footage to do this kind of strange double exposure map thing. It might look a little bit retro, but maybe that's what you're into. I've got to say that is just such a cool trick to have in Premiere Pro that so few people seem to know about. So there you go.